Hi guys, so uh, I'm back again today. I mean, I'm saying that, but I've been away for like 10 months, so I'm gonna quickly explain where I've been for the past 10 months and then I'm gonna go on to what I'm doing this video on, which is a book review. So for the past 10 months, I've been really busy with the university. I've taken on loads of stuff since this year started. I've taken on a placement, like voluntary placement at an archive place. Uh, on one of the university campuses um, and I've also started editing for the student magazine Impact so I've been really busy along with like other little projects that I've had going on so over Christmas I was a research assistant um, which is not as exciting as it sounds it was literally an excel spreadsheet when I had to number stuff and it was pretty horrible um, so yeah that's where I've been for the past 10 months and to be honest I haven't really done a lot of reading um, it's kind of been put on the back burner because along with stuff I've been doing it's not really been important and it's more important that I've been doing this other stuff so with that said I apologize that I've been gone for like a year but I hopefully will be making videos more regularly at the moment um, because I miss doing them and because I finished a book recently that wasn't a course reading book Whoa, crazy so Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Iron King, or Iron King, however you want to pronounce it. Um, this is by Maurice Druon. I can't, I don't do French, so I assume that has a French pronunciation, um, but I'm just going to pronounce it as that. Um, so, if any of you don't know this book, or even if you do know something about this book, um, this book is a translation from a very popular French book that I am not going to say the name of and I don't even know the name of. Um, but basically I found this in a charity shop and it caught my eye because at the top of the book here has a quote from George R. R. Martin saying this is the original Game of Thrones. Um, and I understand that this is, book has been in the media quite a lot because um, obviously Game of Thrones is really popular now. And there's been a few articles um, by British journalists about the origins of Game of Thrones and they cite this book as one being one of the origins. So, uh, quick plot overview. Basically, this book covers uh, the period of uh, the 14th century in France um, and it basically covers the events of the Hundred Years' War. So this book is, I think, the beginning of the events. So you have Philip the Fair who is on the throne. Um, um, I don't know, really know if it's a spoiler, but by the end of it, he's no longer on the throne. I won't, I won't tell you why. Maybe you know why because, I mean, history. Um, but by the end of the book, he's not on the throne, and that's the start, basically, of the Hundred Years' War. So in this book, you have the story of main story is Philip the Fair being on the throne um, and then you have the story of the Knights Templar um, who I'm not going to go into detail about but basically there's an event that happens in the book with the Knights Templar and Philip the Fair which kind of like drives the story um, and it's all kind of like centered around that and it's all kind of like laying the foundations for the fight that's going to happen between people who want the power of the throne so it's very Game of Thrones, and it's fair to it's fair to say that Game of Thrones has taken quite a lot of inspiration from actual history. Um, so this book is quite historically accurate. Um, at the end of the book, you'll find a couple of notes um, on the actual history of the things that the book is describing. But because it's historical fiction, it's obviously exaggerated and it's sensational and there are lots of things that I'm sure don't happen in real life. But yeah, it's fun. And like if you're a reader that will read things and not want them to be like 100% accurate, it's really good. And um, I think I'm right in saying that it's quite historically accurate anyway. Like it's not like a, a novel that pretends to be historically accurate and then is actually a load of bullshit and it's not like those films you go and see when it's like this is based on true events and it's not um i think this is so with that said 
that's kind of like a broad overview of what the book's about. So now I'm going to go on to tell you what I think of the book. So this being a translation, um, it's fair to say that the language isn't great. It's very basic. Sometimes it's very disjointed. Sometimes it's quite hard to understand what it's actually trying to say. But given that it's a translation, um, I think I can kind of let it slide and I kind of put that to the back of my mind because it's not really fair to judge a book on how well written it is when it's been translated from another language. So if you're someone who just can't look past really badly written stuff, maybe stay clear of this because it's quite basic. Um, but for me, I, I usually like books that are really well written and I kind of look past that because the story itself is actually really interesting. Um, so I like this book and I like this book because the story interests me and because I like history and this is a historical uh, historical novel, um, however true that might be. And I literally have no idea about the events that happened in France that it describes. So this is actually really interesting and a lot of stuff that happens in the book I later googled and they actually happened and the people who were in the book actually existed. So it's a really nice kind of like um, starter for somebody or if you're somebody who doesn't know a lot about French history and the history of the Hundred Years War I would definitely recommend that you pick it up because it's quite a basic um, story, it's, it's easy to follow even though the language is a bit disjointed. So yeah that's, that's what I really liked about it. Um, the only bad points I can point out is the fact that it's badly written, um, but again, this is probably due to the translation, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna criticise it much for that. So in the end, I gave it three out of five stars, which for my Goodreads rating, I'm pretty sure that means that I liked it because I did like it. I think my star rating system goes hate, it was okay, like, really like, the best book ever. Um, so three stars is kind of like above average. I usually give stuff um, two stars because that's kind of like my meh point. <laughs> so this got three out of five stars. So I definitely recommend it. Um, I'm probably not going to continue with the series just because I don't know. I feel like the translation and the disjointed language is is a barrier enough for me to not want to read on. I enjoyed I enjoyed this book, but reading the whole series is not high up on my priority list at the moment. Um, so, yeah, not going to do that anytime soon. But I will talk about what I'm reading at the moment, which is a course book, but it's quite a cool book. So I thought I'd show it because um, I may review it depending on how much I like it. So. I'm reading A Clockwork Orange at the moment by Anthony, Anthony Burgess. I never know how to pronounce the second name. Probably should learn that one day, considering I am an English student. Anyway, so I'm reading this at the moment. Uh, I'm only like 28 pages in, something like that. I'm sure you all know A Clockwork Orange. Um, the language is made up. Slash. Oh, actually, I think it's based on the language, so I shouldn't say that it's made up. So the language is really quite difficult to grasp. But um, last year I read *Train Spotting* by Irvin Welsh, and that was written in Scottish dialect, and that was also very hard to get into. But once I got into it, I actually really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping the same will happen for *A Clockwork Orange*. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, I will be back with probably another book review soon. Maybe I'll do a discussion. Depends how I feel. Depends if I can have a moment of genius where I think that I can talk for like five minutes about something interesting. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'll be back soon, hopefully. Have a good week or weekend or day, whatever you are right now. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!